Hello students. We have already studied the Pascal's principle and we move on to the third application of Pascal's principle that is the hydraulic brake. We are all aware that hydraulic brakes are used in cars and they use nothing else but Pascal's principle. The construction and working of hydraulic brakes is the most interesting application of the Pascal's principle. Let's take a look at the construction of the hydraulic brake. Now if you take a look at the diagram, we know that the first thing we do in a hydraulic brake is that we place our foot on the pedal. Now the foot placed on the pedal and the pedal is the first component of a hydraulic brake. So foot pedal is the first thing we need to know. The second thing we need to know is that the foot pedal is connected to the master cylinder P and if you take a look at this black piston, it's the piston A. So we say that the foot pedal is connected through the piston A to a master cylinder P. So every car or every vehicle has a master cylinder P. Now to this master cylinder P is connected a pipeline R. If you take a look at the pipeline, it contains a liquid and in case of a hydraulic brake, it is obvious that this liquid will be oil, which is commonly referred to as brake oil. This master cylinder P is then connected to a wheel cylinder. And for each wheel, there is a wheel cylinder, which we will call as Q. Now this wheel cylinder Q is connected to two pistons, B1 and B2, as you can see. These two pistons are then pressed against the two brake shoes, which we will see are the next components. What is important to note is the cross-sectional area of Q is greater than the cross-sectional area of P. So you can see that Q is a bigger cylinder than P, that is the wheel cylinder is greater than the master cylinder. Next we move on to the next component, that is the brake shoes which are touching the piston. The brake shoes pressed against the rim of the wheel and finally we have a spring and the spring restores the original position of the brake shoes once you release the brakes. So these were the different components and this is the construction of the hydraulic brakes. But let's move on to see what is the working and how these hydraulic brakes use the principle of Pascal's law. So let's understand Pascal's principle in terms of the hydraulic brakes. Now to apply the brakes, we know that the first thing we do is apply pressure on the foot pedal. So once the foot pedal is pressed, what happens is the piston moves into the master cylinder, which means the piston is exerting pressure on the liquid inside the master cylinder. Now once the liquid is exerted with pressure, we know that the liquid inside the master cylinder P will run out from the master cylinder to the wheel cylinder because of the increased pressure. Now there is excess pressure in the wheel cylinder. But we know pressure gets transmitted equally. Why? Because of Pascal's principle. So this increased pressure in the wheel cylinder is going to get transmitted equally to both the pistons which are B1 and B2 and this is going to make the pistons that is B1 and B2 push outwards. So you can see the increased pressure causes the pistons to move outwards. Now if the pistons move outwards, who are they going to press against? It is obvious that these pistons will press against the brake shoes, which will then press against the rim of the wheel and the motion of the vehicle retards. So this is how you apply brakes in hydraulic brakes. So this is the first part of the working that is application of the brakes. Let's try and understand where does Pascal's principle fit in inside this working. So to understand that, remember that the area of cross-section of piston A, that is the master cylinder P, is less than that of the wheel cylinder Q. And according to Pascal's law, we know that pressure is transmitted equally. So the pressure in the master cylinder is equal to the pressure in the wheel cylinder. So we can write P1 equals P2. But pressure we know is force upon area. So we say F1 upon A1 equals F2 upon A2. But we know cross-sectional area of the master cylinder is less than the cross-sectional area of the wheel cylinder. And so we write that since A1 is less than A2, it is obvious that F1 must be less than F2. And therefore, 
f1 upon a1 can be equal to f2 upon a2 only if f1 less than f2. And from this we can see that a small force applied at the foot pedal produces a large force on the piston B1 and B2 of the wheel cylinder Q. That is F1 is much less than F2. A small force F1 gave you a large force F2. So we have seen how Pascal's principle is used to apply brakes. Now let's see what happens if I want to release the brakes. So let's take a look at the diagram again. Now in the working of releasing the brakes, the first thing of course we do is release the pressure from the foot pedal. So you take off your feet from the pedal and the piston is going to come back to its original position. Now if the piston comes back to its original position, it's obvious that the liquid will run back from the wheel cylinder to the master cylinder. The pistons will come back to their original position. And the spring is going to help the brake shoes come back to their original position. So the rim of the wheel is now free to move and then we can say that the brakes have been released. So we have seen how to release brakes simply by removing your feet from the foot pedal and the pressure causes the liquid to run back in the master cylinder and you can start your car again. So this was the working of the hydraulic brake. Before we conclude our conversation on Pascal's law, let us note the following things. In all the three applications that we learnt, we have to be careful that effort is less than load. Every time the force we applied was much less than the force we obtained. That is a small force gave us a large force. So force applied is less than force obtained, which we can say that is effort is less than load. Also, we know that the displacement or we can say the distance moved by effort was greater than the distance moved by load, whether it's the hydraulic press where the bale of cotton moves a larger distance or the hydraulic jack where the car can be moved to a higher height or in this case the hydraulic brake where the pistons move outwards, the displacement or the distance moved by effort was greater than the distance moved by load. And therefore, we say that the large displacement of the piston causes a small displacement of the load. And therefore, product of effort and distance moved by effort becomes equal to the product of load and the distance moved by load. And the product of any force and the distance is nothing but the work done. So from this, we can say that the work done by effort becomes equal to the work done by load. And so it's important to remember that in all these applications, the work done by effort equals the work done by load. Also, we can say that since effort is less than load, we can say that load upon effort is greater than 1 and therefore mechanical advantage is greater than 1. Also, the velocity ratio which is distance moved by effort upon distance moved by load will also be greater than 1 and therefore all these machines act like force multipliers. So in any case where you require a larger force, a force multiplier that is any of these machines are used. Thank you.